Hi guys, uh, in this tutorial we are going to teach you how you can work with Jupyter Notebook, right? So I hope you have installed Jupyter Notebook on your system and now it's time to make our first Python file in this notebook. So this is also called interactive Python shell. We will see why it is called so. Right? The first step is once you have uh, start started this Jupyter Notebook from the command prompt. In the command prompt you have to just type jupyter space notebook and it will instantiate this thing in your browser right so you will see that a browser your browser will open and you will see python notebook running on your local server the next step is you have to go to new you you will create a python 3 file here and you will give it a name right so let us say introduction to python right so we can give it any name and just rename it right and if you go to your directory right so if you see you will see there is one notebook which you have created which is called introduction to python right and now it's time we can write anything in this cell right so jupyter supports both a code and it also supports markdown right so using markdown you can add any text you can convert any cell into a markdown cell just by going to this link or you can also use you can uh, first press escape and then you can press m button on your keyboard and this any cell will become a markdown cell so let us see how we can write markdown right so let us say the uh, heading is python basics and i am giving some bullet points here let's say we will be learning about how to print hello world and uh, what are variables in python right so i can if you want to execute any cell you can just press shift enter right so this basically becomes a text in your code right so this is a markdown text right? you can learn more about python uh, more about markdown suppose you want to convert this cell into ma markdown it will become escape you will press the m button it becomes a markdown cell and if you want to execute it you can you have to press shift enter and if you want to convert this cell into code cell either you can do, do using this drop down or what you can do you can just press y button so y button will convert this cell into a code cell right so let us say let us execute one statement print hello world and if you want to execute it you can press the run button or you can just uh, press shift enter on your keyboard that's it that's as easy as that so okay now let us talk about some variables some numbers let's say a equals to 10 b equals to 10.5 and i just execute this so you will see there is no output and the in these two statements you have created two buckets in the memory which store these values and if you want to print these numbers you can say print a and you can say print b so you can see the output is 10 and 10.5 and let us see what are the type of these numbers so print type is a inbuilt function which gives you a data type of any number if you print type of a and if you print type of b you will see that a is an integer and b is a floating point value like any other language right Apart from this, Python has uh, other data types as well. We will be talking about the, those data types also. And suppose if C is a uh, string, let's say C is hello, uh, hello Python, right? So let us see what C is. Print type of C. So C is a string. This is one more data type that Python supports. So not just integers and floats, Python also supports boolean and complex data types. So let us say d is a complex number. So we write complex number like this 5 plus 3j and if I want to print d and I also want to print type of d. So d is this number and the type of this is a complex which means d is a complex number. All right and python has some advanced data types right uh, but we will be talking about those little later on these data types are called list 
couples, dictionaries, sets, right? So these are complex data types, right? We will be talking about these later on, right? So these are complex data types. We will be talking little later about it. Right? So, and one more thing in Jupyter is when you're executing your code, uh, the order of execution of cells is very important. Suppose you create a new cell here. And if you want to create a new cell below it, either you can go to this insert and you can say insert cell below, or you can use the shortcut, right? So you can use the shortcut, you can press escape and you can press the B button, right? So it will automatically add a cell below. Okay. So let us create one more variable, which is called a equals to hundred. And if you do print a, okay. Let me do, let me execute this cell and let me add one more cell and I do print a. So you can see a is hundred, but if I execute this cell and then I execute print a cell, you will see a is now 10, right? So the order in which the code is written is not, does not matter, but the order of execution of cells matters in Jupyter and Python is a interpreted language. If you execute this cell first and if you execute this cell after this, you will see the value of a is going to change and you can also make it float a earlier was an integer. Now you, you will see a is a floating point number. You can also print the type of a. So you can see the type of a has changed from integer to float. These are some Python basics. We will be talking a lot more detail about Python in the next video. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.